Stop! Please! Holy oh, shit. Hey, what's up? This is Community Service with Craig Conan. That's me. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Community Service with Craig Conant. Today I have my lovely glass. <laughs> are you having a stroke? God damn it. Yeah, Already off the bat. out immediately. You know I'm going to be a newscaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the worst. Yeah, uh, yeah with the worst introductions ever. Yeah, You I won't know. even be able to get through anything. I can't Did you see the movie it. L.A. Story? No. Mm, never mind. Um, well, let's say no your name. Me. This is Nicole Oh, Amy. I'm Nicole Amy Schreiber. Hi. But which one are you going for? Nicole Amy? Nicole Amy. It's actually pronounced M A. M A. It's, it's Nicole M A. Schreiber, but I just say Amy because everybody you can't figure it out. Yeah, it's French. You are French. I'm not French. I'm I'm German, Russian, and Polish. But my mom liked French names, so she gave me some French names. Oh, your mom's a Frenchie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Goddamn <laughs> Frenchers. And then uh, we have, and then we have uh, Craig's co-host here. Yeah, Christopher Lund. <laughs> wow, is that his? Did you forget his name? I felt like you—that was you forgetting his name. He just learned my name. I talked oh, about nice. it on the okay. last two podcasts. I called him Christopher Lundgren for ten like years. Like Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. yeah. And I genuinely Hilarious. thought it was Lundgren, but it's Lund. And now I well, maybe if have you had stop. focused more on learning someone's name than farting on your manager, you could have remembered his the, name. I've said it before. I said it again. That he had it coming. He had it coming. <laughs> he had it coming. I, I mean, you farted on me the second I walked in the door. Yeah. That was very kind of you. Everybody has it coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, Are you okay? Did you just stroke out again? I did. I Because I oh, always no. think about what I want to talk about. I should really have a notepad. Yeah, you paper. should. You should prepare for this. <laughs> never. You should definitely have a plan of approach. <laughs> so there's several things we're going to need to touch base on. The page she just got passed and then your epic poopy. My epic poopy? Which epic poopy? There's a lot of epic poopies. No, there's the one. You know the fucking one. But oh, we'll my do shit's that right. Okay, okay. All right, all because right. Because right. sometimes we'll, 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 if we get started too early about the poop, the whole yeah. podcast is about poop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we know, can't do that. We can't and do I, that. I'm just, trying just, to grow. Just so a, you guys know, I'm sure his listeners also, uh, Craig's listeners also follow him on Instagram. Um, I'm the one in the video that he was farting on in the video that you posted recently. Yeah, yeah. That's me. And she rolled down the windows, and it was like 113 degrees that day. Oh, yeah, it was. It was hot. That was hot. a summer fart. Yeah, was a, he was, was hot boxing us because we couldn't roll the windows down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay? Yeah. You keep having these moments where you check out. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, all of a sudden, you'll just, like, you have, like, a thousand-yard stare, like you've been through some sort of trauma. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good. I'm yeah, fine. I think you need to turn on your crystal lamp over there. Oh, it's a pink Himalayan sea a salt lamp. A pink Himalayan sea salt. It's not yeah, a yeah, crystal lamp. Sorry, I'm sorry. Turn no, on your pink history. Himalayan sea salt uh, lamp, because I feel like that'll yeah, it'll help. maybe keep you focused. Some yeah. good vibes. I had this before Perfect. I saw it Are those Rogan. a lot of crystals you have on your nightstand as well? No. Uh, you guys, yeah, Craig has, uh, <laughs> and by the way, they're all very big. They could, those I, all, do you ever shove those in your ass? I, I feel love like you rocks. Could shove they them. are way too sharp for ass shoving. Um, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what if kind I of penetration your butt could smooth ones. What a, you guys, I, do you have pictures of your apartment on Instagram? I've done videos many a time. It's times. so adorable, you guys. It's such there's so many plants. First I of all, keep it all clean. I th- all I can think about, by the way, when people have plants in their apartment is that there's spiders living in them. No, no, no. Oh yeah, you what are you were the only person who has spider free plants? Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's where spiders live. Those are their abodes. No, don't say that. Okay, well, I'm saying it because that's where they you are. Gotta You've go. got spiders in here. <laughs> Cut to all me right. later cool, at the cool, night. Cool. Like the, yeah. And then he has a sign that says, I'm so grateful that my career is blowing up. And now I couldn't agree that. with you. Now that my career is blowing up. You Craig, keep you're it doing positive. so well. I love it. I love it so much. That makes me really happy to see that. You really do have a very good attitude about a lot of things. I try. It's a rough world out yeah, there. Yeah, it is. It's really <laughs> it's fucking rough. a rough, rough. goddamn world. Goddamn airplanes going by, heckling yeah, us right hold, now. Hold for, hold, hold sound, for hold sound. Hold for the German B-52. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Oh, God, don't trigger yeah. me. I'm a Jew. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, heart. Remember, well, I told you, you I'm cathartic. You, oh, yeah, you, oh, you, you, Sephardic. Not, cathartic. cathartic. You keep saying that, and I'll enjoy it every time you say it. You're Sephardic. Sephardic. Sephardium. Sephardium. You're Sephardium. 
You'll never get it. My uncle took a DNA test, and uh, people have told me my whole life I look Jewish. Well, guess what? I am. Yeah. If only I had the last name and known this before I got into Hollywood. Although it wouldn't it have helped. Help. It wouldn't it have helped. Yeah, no, helps. No, I'm, I'm Jewish, nothing and it's helps. done absolutely nothing. You just got passed. So I didn't about get passed that. because I'm a Jew. Yeah, you did. Yeah, for sure. They said, we need a Jew. They're like, you know what? There's not enough of Jew <laughs> on yeah. this wall. I realized I just had back-to-back Jews. Yeah, who's your other Jew? Andrew Delman. Yep. Oh, is he a Jew? His hair is. Yeah, I yeah. don't think he's a Jew. Is he? He claimed to be, yeah. It, yeah oh, he, he is? is? He oh, is. I didn't know that. He's an Ashkenazi. He married a girl who's uh, the daughter of two preachers, a double preacher daughter. Oh, geez. No yeah. fucking way. His wife's fucking great, Lee Newton. Oh, she's One hilarious. of the funniest human beings she's ever. so funny. So funny. I seen her character uh, in that lab, and I was dying. Yeah, it's she fantastic. is wildly <laughs> hilarious. Wait, okay, we're getting sidetracked with all, all the right. Jew talk. By the way, I hope I don't uh, come off as... Uh, Anti Semitic, the goddamn bombers. Anti Semitic, don't worry. No one's okay. going to think you're anti Semitic. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, I had Jews on the podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> like, you I'm know 80. What? <laughs> you know, it's really funny. As a Jew, I, I have to say, people love when they find out I'm Jewish. Non Jews love to find out I'm Jewish. People get surprised. I feel like Jews are kind of like a mythical unicorn for some people, for some non Jews. They're like, oh, you're Jewish? You're a Jew? It's like, it's very exciting for people. Like, they've never seen Sasquatch before. I have. Yeah. <laughs> You're right next to me. <laughs> You've got your Yeti right here. Wait, well, he paid regular. Let's do it. I, I'm, I'm just fascinated. Uh, I took uh, her to celebrate the swingers and made her pay for her own dinner. And oh, then yeah, you did do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man. I live in a studio and have no, uh, what is that? I have income, but it's like the stock market. It comes and it goes, you mm-hmm. know? You have no steady income. Steady. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rock yeah. steady. Anyways. I don't have a steady income either. I know. We have the, we we have get, the same life. We do. But he, uh, worked at, he worked at Trader Joe's. I used to work at Costco. And then we'd go open up for like Atel and Bobby Lee. Yeah, it was crazy. And then we would go back and stock mm, bananas back and, yep, and yep, hand yep. out samples. Absolutely, yep. It was great. It's a great existence. <laughs> if you're out oh, there hustling for your dreams, just so you know, we love you for that. Get it. Get it, girl. Get it, boy. Anyways, she got passed at the comedy store. Back to that shit. That is, it, it is Just so you know, guys, so getting passed is a good thing because I think I, I've told people awesome. who aren't in the comedy world that I got passed at the comedy sco- store and they're like, oh, don't worry, you'll get it next time because the word <laughs> passed means. Okay, passed is a good thing. I got passed into, not passed over. And I don't want Nicole to downplay this shit. I don't think uh, people know how hard it is to get past there and how it just doesn't happen to anybody. And the list of people past there is fucking Rogan, uh, Diaz, Richard Pryor, Robin. You know, it's it's not an easy thing. Yeah. And past is a good thing. Uh, so that means basically I'm a paid regular now. I get to do paid regular shows. Um, and I get my name on the wall. Um, and, uh, you get paid. Yeah, I get paid. I get paid to do comedy at the uh, store, which is pretty dope. And how long of a process was that? I think I started going consistently to the store. I mean, I was there on and off for a few years, but I think I started going really consistently in like probably 2013 is when I was like, Oh, I'm gonna really commit to this. Like I was more sporadic before that. Well, you you started showing up there at least like eight years ago, though, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Um, but it wasn't. You know, I was kind of like one foot in, one foot out when it came to stand up comedy. I wasn't even totally sure if like that's the first time I got on stage was 2010, and then I was also doing improv at the time, so I was kind of like splitting, not even splitting my time. I was definitely doing more of the other thing, but I would do like comedy like once a month and i'd be like i'm a comedian um and it wasn't until probably 2012 that i was like oh i need to work hard at this and i started doing it far more frequently and then i would say like 2013 i went through a breakup and then after that breakup you know there's nothing like going through a breakup that either like kickstarts a diet or a new career yeah so i i did both i lost a ton of weight and i started (laughs) doing comedy consistently it was great it was me at my prime you guys (laughs) bulimic yeah no not bulimic i wasn't i'm too way too cheap to be bulimic i'm not gonna buy and then return the goods no 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 yeah that's fucking awesome yeah and uh yeah, yeah. We, we what are you my doppelganger we we did the same shit i did improv first mm-hmm. and i barely did stand-up so i don't really count it because i would do it like twice a year yeah yeah, yeah. and it was just because i was terrified oh it was so scary it's so much easier not like doing improvs easy but it was just 
you have that safety net of everyone else on the stage with you. Okay, is it the same for you? Are you now terrified of improv? No, not at all. I'm terrified. I did improv because I was terrified of stand up because of that, the safety net. You're on stage with five, six other people. And and then you don't bomb by yourself. It's not yourself. even like I was terrified of stand up. I just felt, I don't know. I I I wasn't good enough at stand up to feel fulfilled by it. Not like I was an expert at improv, but I just felt like I had my sea legs when it came to improv. So yeah. I kind of liked just doing it more, and it was already familiar, and I like knew the improv community somewhat. So it wasn't like, you know, it's like when you start doing stand up, you you kind of walk into this community where everybody already knows each other and then you kind of have to get to know everybody and it's just a weird and it's by, like coming to by, a new high school it's and like also, it's like they are not welcoming at all no no at they're not all. and it's like, it's I feel like it's improv like, is definitely it. more welcoming of a community. Um, definitely fifty million. Percent I mean, I think improv people welcoming. are just nicer, warmer people. Absolutely. But I also think they're fake and full of shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but in, not all. But uh, stand up people are like you know you you don't get to just walk in. No. It's like wait, are you gonna be here for real? For real? Yeah. You gotta climb a wall and jump yeah. over lava and yeah. Hope you make it. Yeah. Don't die. But um, no, I was absolutely terrified of stand up and it would ruin my like if I was going to do an open mic or I got a show mm -hmm. and it would ruin my month. I would be so terrified. Dude, I remember the first time I saw you do stand up. I thought you were so fucking funny. It was crazy. I saw you at Malo in that yeah. upstairs area. It was a Tammy Joe show. We were on the show together. Yeah. And I remember sitting in the crowd being like, who's this fucking Trader Joe kid? Yeah. You were making Trader Joe jokes. I was brand new. And I new. was like, uh, brand new. But and so, but where were you doing improv? Second City. Okay. I went through the program. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I'll never forget it. Because uh, you went up and then you just talked about me during yeah. your set. Yeah. And I I've was, never experienced any of that. Yeah. I was like, I was so impressed. He was so funny. Yeah, that was uh, that was the probably my first year of stand up. Yeah. You were you've always been very just effortlessly and relatably funny. I'm just a goofball. I know, and that's <laughs> it's so wonderful. It's because so, sometimes you watch people who are new in comedy and they're trying so hard to be funny, and like you were new and you were just inherently funny, um, and you were trying, but it wasn't one of those things where it was like uncomfortably trying hard. It was just. You were having a good time up there. It wasn't. It I wasn't, love it. Yeah, it I was. Love you really it. Really had a had a blast, and it showed. I uh, in the beginning, I used to forget my because I was still drinking and drugging and whatnot. The first few times I performed, I was on like hash oil edibles and shit, and I would forget my jokes and I would just freeze like a fucking freight train was Wait, coming at hash me. Hash oil edibles. <laughs> I used to eat weed, smoke weed. Wait, drink. How long have you been sober now? Five years. Oh, so when I met you, you weren't sober. I might have been just sober like 30 days. Oh, interesting. Because when I started uh, doing Tammy shows, mm -hmm. it was right when I got sober. I oh, had, yeah, because like, I remember you talking about being sober in it. Yeah, so the first 10 shows or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't even know, yeah. I was not sober, and then the rest I was sober. Oh, that's bananas. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, so you had, you had probably just gotten sober when I first saw you. Yeah, because I, I remember at, during every set, I would say, I'm 31 days sober, and I have like audio recordings, mm -hmm. and then the next time is 36, too much, too 42, months. Yeah, yeah, two year, months, six uh -huh. months, a right. year. And then after a year, I just, just use years now. Yeah. Or I don't even know if I say years. I just say I'm sober. Yeah. Oh, I love but that. Yeah, it's, what it a great was, story. Yeah, it's cool. It was actually, I re-listened to some old sets, and... God, you think you're good and you suck. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's nothing harder than listening to some of your first sets. Oh, I recently found God. a bunch of video from first sets I did, and I was just like, oof. And you're like, why are they laughing? Why, this is bad. Why Don't did people laugh at let this. me keep going yeah. with this? Like, why didn't my friends have an intervention where they're like, Nicole, you're wasting your life? <laughs> the one go good thing about those audio tapes is cool, and you just said, is that the day progression, like, it just. It was like, you know, one is like, I'm 167 days sober, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's cool. It's cool. And then I still am. Ooh. I like that you're <laughs> sober. It's good for you. I have no idea why I just made that noise. <laughs> Neither do I, but I'm just letting you do it. I'm letting you live your truth here on your own podcast. 
It's a nice wood. It's a great table. It's did great. Uh, did you post pictures of this great table that you got? No, but maybe I remember I when will. you posted a picture of it uh, on your story. I was like, God, it's a goddamn great table. Yeah, I got it at the uh, the old rodeo there on uh, Melrose and Fairfax. That's yeah, great. I might need to get one like this. The rodeo. Um, Anywho, let's go on. Let's go on to some other okay. stuff. What are we going to talk about? I'm going to keep us on track. That's what yeah, I'm going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You should. Yeah. Because although you're not on drugs, you act like a stoned person. I know. I you get lose that track all like a stoned time. person. Uh, so much. I get messaged all the time. They're like, are you sure you're sober? I'm like, yeah, I'm just kind of fried, man. Yeah. Did you do that many drugs that you're fried from drugs? Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You don't, you don't even need to answer. You laugh like a person who's seen shit. I, yeah. I've eaten like a quarter of mushrooms and saw dragons in the sky. Uh, that'll do it to you. Where, um, where, where did you, did you go to rehab or you just did started doing 12 step? I did the ghetto, uh, bootleg, uh, my own rehab to kick narcotics. And then years later I just did a AA to get off booze. Yeah. And weed. Um, but yeah, to kick Oxycontin and cocaine, I just got, uh, by the way, I don't recommend this, but you know, it worked for me, but, uh, I just got cases of two buck chuck from Trader Joe's mm-hmm. and a couple ounces of weed and just drank and smoked until I could uh, pass out to, oh. to kick the physical withdrawals. Oh, so you just did it on your own? Yeah. Oh, that's hard. I just went to my sister's house and stayed there for a couple of weeks and took vacation from was work. Was she monitoring uh, you? No, uh, no one was going to get me sober but me. Yeah, but did they know what you were going through? Yeah, they could tell. I was just like... Uh, pale and i like if you saw me at that time you're like oh you're not healthy yeah, you're i was sick. green yeah like i'm 155 uh pounds now and I, at that time i was 185 so i was 35 30 pounds heavier mm-hmm. and i just i wasn't fat but it just i wasn't healthy yeah. and you could tell you'd be like oh fuck it, it was the type of look where you're like oh he, he if he keeps going he might die young you know yeah just too much i just love to get high yeah. And just scratch my nuts. <laughs> I, you know what? You talked about that the other day when we were at a show, and I did not know that was a thing, the scratching your nuts thing. Have I talked about this yeah. on the podcast? Yeah. I have. I love that somebody Damn has to it. keep track of what I you're don't talking remember. about. <laughs> you guys, I, I mean, so, so your listeners know about this nut scratching yeah. thing. It's, it's perplexing to me. Yeah, it's what it's do girls scratch your fucking nose and I your mean, what nuts? Are, when, we're, when we're in withdrawal and we're scratching, what are we scratching? What Any, do you think girls are... Uh, ladies, anyone who's kicked. I think the nose. I think the nose, the nose and the crotch. Just the go-to itchy spots. I mean, but we don't have... Our crotch aren't like itchy, itchable things. Like, vaginas aren't itchable. Maybe kneecaps? Buttholes? Oh, I'll <laughs> itch the shit out of my butthole. <laughs> well, you need a bidet. I got an itchy booty hole. Oh, no, I use baby wipes like crazy. I wanted to have diarrhea when I came over here, but I wasn't sure you had baby wipes, so I was like, all right, I'm going to have to wait till I, I get home. I have baby wipes and a bidet, but I got, had to uninstall my bidet. You got baby wipes? Yeah, what do you think? I'm uh, a monster? I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. If people don't have baby wipes at their house, they are they're monsters. They truly are. That's gross. I can't I I'm not gonna lie, I maybe got on the baby wipe tip uh two years ago. Uh, I lived a bad a life. Oh, you're disgusting. Basically you just have crumbs. a shitty you have asshole. You have dingleberries. <laughs> you got fucking... dingleberries. Yeah, absolutely. Your booty stinks. First of all, I just don't understand. If you like if 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 you have poop on anything, you wash the poop off. Why do you walk around with poop sticking you, on you? Do you want to know what my family calls a stinky booty hole? What? Booty patrol. Like if your booty stinks in my family, they go, oh, Lisa's got booty patrol. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're on booty patrol, but they call someone else having booty patrol? Because you're technically your family would be on booty patrol if they're policing. Well, yeah, somebody's no, that's booty just our role. slang. That's yeah, it's our it's slang. very it's very confusing. I know, it's, it's, I know, it's, but you you're not you're not well, part I'm not of my part family. Of, I'm not part of. So the, you don't know okay, about perfect. the booty patrol but origins. Just so you know, just so you know, it's a little confusing because if you're say if you say booty patrol, you're assuming there's somebody going around patrolling booties. Yeah, but, I, I get but your in logic, instance, but I don't like it. Okay, listen, I, I don't care what you like. I just need you to acknowledge, which yeah, you have, yeah, yeah. That, right. that my logic holds way more water than yours. Whatever. Okay, it, cool. I'm weird, and so is my family, and we call it booty patrol. Okay. But uh, this is a good one. So uh, my cousin in Mexico, uh, she was wearing little shorts. She was a little kid. She was like eight. I was nine. And she had American flag uh, shorts. Mm-hmm. And it was a white star. Oh no! Her, on her booty. Oh no! We know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, she goes no. to the bathroom. She comes out. She's a little kid. She doesn't wipe good. She doesn't make it. I don't know what happened. 
But she she's also a little kid, so she just goes back to playing. Oh, no. <laughs> and we look, and she has a brown star on her ass. Oh, oh no. And we fucking just laughed <laughs> and laughed, and we still make fun of her to this day. And you just let her keep playing in the sandbox with a, with a booty hole? Yeah, man. We want to make fun. With a booty patrol? But a, a, a brown star. We brown call her star. brown star. Her brown eye got a brown star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a real rising star. That's that fucking kid. awesome. How old is she now? Uh, 33. Oh my gosh. And you still call her like what? Booty, booty patrol star. Yeah. What's her, what's her name? Nickname. Uh, Anytime she goes to the bathroom, you guys always like, did you wipe well? Do you tease <laughs> yeah. her about it every time? We, uh, kind of. Every, ev- every, every year, every year for Christmas for- <laughs> in the stocking, she gets a package of baby wipes. We go, remember your brown star? Oh no. Yeah, of course. I have uh, a story that's so gnarly. I don't know if I should tell it. Tell it. Oh, man. Tell it. <laughs> you want me to tell a duty story? You're going to have to tell one, too, buddy. Yeah, this isn't duty. So, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not gonna name names, but we know who they are. So, in Mexico, uh, me, my mom, my sister, and my cousin were at Frida Kahlo's house doing the Frida tour. Frida Kahlo? What, what did I say? Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Free to color. Oh, man. Yeah, we're at that lady's house. The one with the unibrow. She's got uh-huh. good paintings. Uh-huh. She uh, she paints a lot of peace lilies, and I fell in love, and now I have four of them. Anyways, so we're taking a selfie at Frida Kala's house, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, <laughs> and it's me, my mom, my sister, my cousin, and we start smelling this, this waft, and it hits us, and we're like... What the fuck is that? And we're like, is there a dead animal? We're like, oh, it's, you know, it's Mexico. It must be a dead cat. Someone didn't Hilarious. clean up, right? Is, is there a dead cat epidemic in Mexico? <laughs> I don't know. That's what we're thinking. Okay. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then, and then it smells so bad. We're, we're literally like shuffling as a family because, you know, it's selfie. We're all close. There's four of us. And we move over here. Smell follows. We're like, what the fuck? <gasps> and then we go to get in the car. And um, it's an SUV, so, you, you know, my, my cousin crawls in, and Army crawls, and her booty's in the air. Oh, and I go to get in behind oh, her. no, no, no. And a, <laughs> a fucking smell hit my oh, face no, 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 like no. a ton of bricks, dude. I went like that. Like, I literally went in and went, huh, and I just stopped, and I backed up, and I was like, and I went around the car, and I went to the other side, and her pussy smelled so bad that it smelled like a dead animal. <laughs> oh, no, she had BV. <laughs> And my sister, she had to stay in the same room in this little loft. Oh, no. She had bacterial and, and vaginosis. She, oh, and no. she fucking slept That's like this. And her, and her pussy just stunk up and hotboxed the whole room. Oh, and no. she snored. So she had stank puss and snore. My sister poor fucking zombie black eyes underneath because she get no sleep. Because she, <laughs> she had to do a nose plug and ear plug. She couldn't get... No good sleep. Oh, that is and so then, R&R. So we were actually. Did it w- somebody say something to her? <laughs> um, no, we just, like, hey, we just made fun of her. You might want to booty patrol your pussy. <laughs> we, we just made fun of her every time she walked away with the whole family. Oh, that's like, so bad. Like pussy? We're like, how could you not? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, it was so foul and so bad that we were like genuinely worried. We're like, this, this is like a medical. This is you. You might need to go to the hospital. And we Googled uh, uh, what, you know, uh, do you do when your pussy smells like a dead carcass? <laughs> and it just said in all bold letters, I swear to God, it said, go to the hospital. Seek medical attention. Yeah, ASAP. It said, go yeah, to yeah. the emergency She had room. bacterial vaginosis. That's what she had. And then they said either it's uh, BV, BV, BV bacterial or uh, vaginosis. she like lost the tampon up there. Which, <sighs> which toxic shock. Yeah. Yeah. That old stink puss. <laughs> oh, I try to talk so about gnarly. this on stage, and uh, I I can imagine you get a little bit of pushback. It didn't go. It didn't go so well. Yeah, yeah. It didn't maybe go stick so with well. doo doo. Maybe stick with doo doo. I feel like that's a good lane for you. As yeah, far as like gross that's, things that a body does, that's all I do is doo doo. I gotta branch out. I mean, you can't branch to... out into stink puss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if stink puss is your lane. Why not? Anyways, I, I think dropped, there's something hard for bit. people to hear. Like, there's it's hard for a woman to hear a man. Speaking in a judgmental manner I know. about a woman's <laughs> vagina. I would address that. I go, I know I'm a man, and I know, I have, about, and I have no business. And I have no vagina talking shit about a pussy. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what the fuck happened in Mexico. And my sister was saying the same shit, and she's a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, you're like, give me some credibility because my my sister did it, so I can do it. Yeah, 
and yeah. my mom and my cousins. We That's all like were, if you say all... racist shit, you're like, it's okay. I have black friends. Like it's not, you can't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that analogy no. is airtight, but it, it felt okay. Cause I'm not coming saying... at it with hate. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it was a, fix, those fix, the, fix the fucking chocha. That was a dead cat down <laughs> there. Is it chocha a vagina? Chocha? Uh, choncha. Choncha? But choncha? I get everything wrong. I don't really know. Oh, okay. That's true. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. What did you call her? Frida? Calor. Calor. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that's uh, that's the weather. I say calor means it's hot outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Do you speak Span? Poquito. <laughs> <laughs> I used to speak a lot because I, you know, took it in high school, and uh-huh. then me, uh, my mom would take me and my sisters. Did to you Mexico go to college? A lot. Like for a semester, I don't think I even lasted the semester. What did you study? What did you want to study? I didn't. I don't even remember. Yeah, that sounds accurate. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't remember. I'm like, I, I don't even know why I asked you. Um, yeah. I was expecting you not to remember. Um, I was going into that question with the highest doubts possible. I went to community college for one semester, and I think I flunked out. And I just kind of went like, well, the, you were you weren't sober at the time, so that makes no, sense. No, and I was just smoking weed and selling yeah. weed. Yeah. So I like wasted money, but then I made money. Yeah. From being there. From selling weed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I sold weed at one point. Everybody does. Yeah. I mean, I sold weed when weed was legal in California. I don't know what kind of hustle I was doing. I'm like, this is so. When weed was legal here, I was. I found a friend who had a grow, and he was like, "I'll give you shake to sell," and I was like, "Okay." And so I just sold shake to comedians. (laughs) You can always sell weed. I feel like right now, even though it's 100 percent legal. Yeah, you can still sell it. I mean, look at this face too. Are you kidding? No, no one's assuming I'm selling. <laughs> what people it. don't realize is the clinics are fucking expensive. I can yeah. get you an ounce of OG Kush for like 200. You go to that clinic down the street, it's like $400. Oh, wow. I get a half price. Wow, guys, Craig has a new side hustle. No, cuz I'll end up smoking it. I I don't Is do that drugs. do you worry about that? Yeah, I can't have a pound of marijuana in my closet and not partake in the joy. Oh my, it's that it's still hard for you? No, not really. But if it's in my closet, looking at me every day, I yeah. love that you're like you're yeah. not even high and it's looking at you. <laughs> it's looking. You're at You're like me. this fucking bag of bag of Kush is looking at me. Oh man, OG Kush and fuck the rest, OG Kush, or you're a bitch. Do you miss weed? Yeah, that's so crazy. It's my baby. I've smoked it for seventeen fucking years, dude. Oh my, that's so mental to me. I know. I think I'm finally even now. I'm finally sober. The same amount of years that I was high. I love that. Congratulations. Nice. I made it. 50-50. That, that makes me happy. Yeah. You deserve that. So one more year and then I'll, I'll go back to drugs. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, yeah. You want to know what? I want to be there when that fucking train goes yeah. off the rails. That I got to watch. I, ca- I can't imagine you high. I know. I was actually. Are you chill? Or are you like a fucking I was jittery? the best. You're the darling. best. Oh, I was so good. I was actually the guy keeping shit on then track. Then why did you stop if you were fun? Uh, because I wouldn't mail a letter that was vital to my life. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, in that case, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely don't go off the rails again because those letters yeah. got to get there. Yeah. What well, letter I, What letter did you miss? What was your rock bottom? <laughs> what mail failed to hit, oh, the, just, just, hit, the, uh, hit where go, it needed to go? Just going to like, oh, I need to go to court. Oh, okay. Or I'm getting my license suspended. I need to go and to then court I'll, for that DUI that I got. That and then I would take a hit. I would say I need to go to court. Take a hit and then, and then not go to court. Yeah, okay. One time my mom said, Can you go to the store to get some milk? I said, Yeah, sure, no problem. I took a hit of OG Kush. I just started driving. I went to the beach. <laughs> and she's like, Where are you? And I was like, Oh, what? And I thought she, you told me to go to the beach. Like, and she's like, Are you fucking she doesn't cuss. She's like, Are you kidding me? I told you to get milk. I was like, uh, she's like, You forgot. And I was like, and then I got mad, like, what are you asking me to do stuff for? You know I'm a bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that pressure on me. It was I milk. love how you just deflect all it responsibility where you're like, you're the idiot for trusting me. <laughs> you fucked up. Oh, my poor mother. And then I had expired. She's so happy you're sober now. Oh, so happy. She's now proud of me. Oh, yeah. that makes me so happy. Oh, man, she used to hate me. I was just this druggy kid stealing her face lotion to whack it. It was a bad... Uh, <laughs> it was a bad. As, you have a joke about that, don't you? Yeah, but I've only done it once in front of you at that rehab show. Yeah, that it was It killed. Funny. I yeah, need it killed. to bring it back. Yeah, you need to bring that back. Chanel, right? Yeah. 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 Um, That was a fun joke. I that was a good that. joke. I need to listen to that and do it again. Yeah. But like what we do at rehab shows and what we do at comedy clubs is so different. different. I just did a rehab show. I just came here from yeah. a rehab show, and man, that show was 
oh, rough. Yeah. These guys <laughs> did not want us there. Well, yeah, these I guys had to do did the... not want to be there. That's the thing about rehab shows is you're up against these people who are, you know, sick from drugs, sick from withdrawal, have no idea who they are, barely understand where they are. It's just, it is in the middle of the day. So it's not like it's the greatest <laughs> circumstances for doing comedy. And these are entitled rehab kids. Yeah, totally. I love the ghetto uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. rehab to save them from going to prison. Those yeah. crowds are the Yeah, best. those are the people who are like, oh, I need to be here or else. So to, to sum it up, me and uh, Nicole, Zane's been on the podcast. We always go do rehab shows with our buddy Zane. And I'm sure you know what happened, but me and Zane and Nate Hurd and Mookie were doing, we're supposed to do the men's group yesterday. Oh, yeah, and it happened to be women. And you're supposed to be the yeah, female and I got, group Yeah, I was supposed today. to have the women today, yeah. So rehabs are often um, segregated by gender. Yeah. Um, because sobriety is hard enough without being fucking horny all the time. Yeah. So uh, typically when, when there are rehabs that are like that, not all of them are, but some of them, um, Zane, who runs this, uh, a nonprofit, um, bring comedy to rehab for, centers. Yeah. Comedy to rehab centers. He'll bring, you know, male comics for the male shows and female comics for the feel sh female shows. And somehow the schedule got swapped. So yesterday, the rehab fucked it up. It wasn't the not Zane. They apologized. Okay. So the rehab was supposed to have the men's show yesterday. And so Zane brought all the male comics. And it is extremely difficult for both parties because yeah. we have... Not that I have a ton of sex jokes, but like, you know, like you, w w these women are going, you know, out of uh, coming out of abusive relationships yeah. and homes. Men so can be very you triggering. Can, you cannot just the look at a man can be triggering. And absolutely, we cannot do any uh, any dick. Fucking no sex. sex. Jokes, yeah. And then uh, I don't have that many a couple, but it's not, you know, like that. But mm -hmm. then. uh so we have to censor ourselves, and I'm up there in my head. I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't do that. I can't do that. All right, yeah, it looks yeah. like it's oh, farts all day, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Mookie gets up there, and he starts talking about, like, Louis C.K. masturbating. And I'm, we're yeah, just, you're like, bro, cut it. <laughs> I know. We're just like, hey, dude. like, he, like Oh, no, he didn't know. He didn't get the memo, yeah. no. He didn't know. I think it was his first or second one anyways. Yeah. Good comic, good dude. Yeah, he's, he's my not, neighbor. Yeah, he's right near each other. yeah, he's nice guy and he's not trying to be like that. Yeah. It's just uh, it wasn't the yeah, demographic. He, he wasn't totally informed. He'll, next time he'll yeah. he'll do it. And then today then I went there and the and Zane brought all lady comics and we had to do stand up for men who you know don't want to listen. Probably to have an issue with women. Yeah. yeah. Um so that was a, it was a, it was an uphill battle. It was good though. It's all, it's, it's shows like that, that kind of like push you to kind of abandon your material and really try to connect with people. Cause sometimes I feel like if you do too much material, it's like, well, they're not listening to it. Yeah. Oh no. And those are just, completely it, different sets. Yeah. Than what you I definitely have to like club. really dig into like connecting people and f connecting with people and finding like the lowest common denominator so you can all relate. Yeah. But man, it is hard. I mean, there was one kid who was just uh, the worst is when they are, when they're going through so much withdrawal that they're just falling asleep. Yeah, they just can't stay awake. They're on that methadone, um, baby. Oh, and then there's the guys who are in the, like, you know, there's these young kids where their only sense of pride is was their drug addiction, and they know drugs so well. That's the thing they knew best. So you know, when you're talking with them and trying to like get on their level a little bit, really the only level they have is like, I know drugs, and I know, you know drugs that's it i know how to get drugs and i know how to do drugs that, that was the actually that they know. the hardest uh thing about me getting sober was all i knew was drugs yeah. my whole circles was drugs i sold drugs yeah my identity was drugs mm -hmm. yeah still kind of is <laughs> uh but i was so scared i'm like i'm gonna lose your identity my friends, who you are everything. my identity yeah my circle i was like what am i going to do now but thank god i have I stand up, slipped in and yeah. dodgeball and just leading a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. Basically, if you want to get sober, you have to replace all bad habits with good habits and good luck. You need a new community. Yeah, I really you, think community is such a big thing. You know what I was shocked, though? What? Almost 98 percent of my friends who were drug addicts and mm -hmm. I said, I'm getting sober. Mm -hmm. were supportive. I could wow. not believe it. There was only a couple crabby, bitter motherfuckers that were like, you got me into this shit. You stay, <laughs> hilarious. You stay hilarious. with me. I'm you like, You dragged Peace. me down here. Now you're leaving? Nobody made you sniff that oxy, wait, bitch. Did you, did you see the movie Aladdin? Oh, wait, I did. Did you did. see Aladdin? <laughs> did you see the movie Aladdin? 
You gotta still eat. You gotta eat to live. Yeah, hey, you where he's like, he's like, are you walking out on me? I don't think so. Anyways, you never mind. I just fucking ignore <laughs> me. But yeah, no, it's like you, you, you brought the people to your depth, and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm gonna get better now. And it's like, well, we don't want to get better yet. You need to stay here. But then, yeah, I mean, that's really like. That's a rare experience were, to was, have that it was. because you hear most of these stories I hear at these rehabs are people talking about, you know, I got sober and like nobody in my life was supportive of it. I think it was because in my group, in my circle, I was the biggest fuck up. Yeah. You know, and they're like, they're oh. like, bro, he yeah. really fucking. <laughs> they're like, it. yeah, maybe like this guy is not together at all. He's fighting horse cops. OK, <laughs> my coke this guy's a fucking idiot. Sell me coke and like hand it to me. And Even look, your coke dealer and was like, he would you like sure? grab my hand and he would be like, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm like, give me the fucking coke. Bitch. Like, Wait, do you talk about that on stage? No, I never. Shit. That's <laughs> really funny. Like the depth of your fucked upness was yeah. when you got sober. Everyone was like, whoo. Yeah. Even your dealer was like <laughs> you're the largest source of income for most of your dealers, and their de- dealers like, oh dear God, thank God Craig got sober. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Richard Pryor talked about that lightly, but I guess it really happened to me, and it's different. I didn't want to rip off him, but yeah. his, his coke dealer was like telling him to quit. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, it's that's but it's some true. Real I mean, shit. he like grabbed my hand, and he's like, "Be careful." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he still sold it to me. Your coke dealer like led the intervention. Green. Yeah. <laughs> And then, you like uh, walk in to buy drugs and you're like all of your family comes out and you're like, what's going on? And he's like, well, you know, I brought your family here today. <laughs> Can I have that eight ball back? Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, man. And uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, one of my I've had dozens and dozens of rock bottoms, but one was I went to a party. Maybe you're addicted to rock bottoms. Yeah, okay, maybe that. I went to a house party where like everyone in there. I was. I went to high school. We drank. We partied. We mm-hmm. smoked. They were mm-hmm. my friends. This mm-hmm. was my group. It mm-hmm. was like, and then they opened the door and they saw me, and their faces dropped, and they go like, "Is it? I was supposed to be secret. I wasn't supposed to know about it, but I did, and I just showed up because mm-hmm. it's, uh, I know everyone in there." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they're like, "Oh," and like, "Oh fuck, Craig's here." And then they're like, "You can't come in," and I was like, "Oh fuck." Why? <laughs> Because I was so bad. I was just, I was a monster. I'm I was like on... imagining they didn't want to share drugs with you. <laughs> no, they were no, like, they no, weren't. No, the, I was the only you're the real drug addict. You're the person where you really fuck up. You were so bad. You no, really they were fucked pussies. up. They only drank time. beer. I had uh, the coke. Spoken I had like the a pills. true fucking, spoken I like had a the true drugs. junkie. <laughs> I, junkies, I love when they compare, like in rehab, people are like, oh yeah, that guy just smoked weed. Fucking loser. I'm over here fucking mainline black tar <laughs> heroin into my dick. No, they weren't drug addicts. They just drank beer. I was the only drug addict. They were pussies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, fucking bitches. No, it was. Uh, it was. There was just enough incidences, enough times to where like we can't even have you in our home. We uh, don't trust you. Something's going to happen. Yeah. And then I was just like, Oh, were you the person who fucking ruined places? Did you fuck up houses? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Holes yeah. in the wall. Oh, the worst. We had a kid like that in my high school. We had a kid like that in my high school, and it was like every after any like time there would be like a big party in high school. The next day, it would be like, you know, where did the kid go? Like, I remember one time they were like, you know, school the next week. People were like, oh, where did you find? Let's say his name's Eric. Like, oh, where'd you find Eric? Eric had, there was a party where Eric stole uh, some, at the house, there was a kid, uh, like a little kid's bicycle. He stole a little kid's bicycle from the house <laughs> and decided he was going to ride it home like five miles and ended up passing out on a front lawn of someone in the neighborhood, like one door from his house. Um, yeah. In like a pile of leaves, and that's how his parents <laughs> found him the next morning. That was me. Yeah, yeah. love it. I uh, <laughs> I w- I used to get uh, coked up and whiskey and whatnot, and you get you get some big old balls. And I used to uh, run and do backflips off walls. You know, oh god, like where you run just, out of wall and you step off the wall. Uh huh. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> parkour. You parkour to yeah. people's fucking houses. Except I never took any traditional gymnastics training whatsoever. Oh, great. So great. sometimes I just land on my head and neck, and my friends would be like, "Oh fuck, we gotta take them to the ER. We're great. all coked up." I'm and, imagine, would, By the way, I'm imagining you're like putting footprints on the wall and like denting the wall. But no, no, no. You actually couldn't even execute the move, so you're just gonna no, but then, snap your but neck I would, and be I would a do paraplegic. I would almost break my neck, and then I would almost land it. And then I would land it, and then one time I did it at this girl's house in Hermosa <laughs> Beach, and my walls at my home and other homes were thick. Like the, I'm not, I go to do it on this girl's fucking wall, oh, and no. my foot just goes right through, through right through the. Drywall. I was size twelve foot, dude. 
it fucking was this massive it was hole. a size 12. And I looked at her and I was like, oh man, I'm so sorry. And everyone's just <laughs> laughing. Oh my God. This girl was like, what but am I, I fucking doing? That's how I know I'm a good shitty person. You I'm came a, back and you I'm spackled a man, it. I'm a man <laughs> of my word. It? I said, you drywalled it. You I said, I'll it? fix this. So uh, I came back, I drywalled it, it, I dry patched it, it uh, I painted it, and I said to her, like, yo, if you don't get your By the way, that is a back, really big fucking patch you had to do. Oh, my God. I had to look it I up mean, on YouTube. I mean, you had to look it up on YouTube. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, you didn't even know how to no, do that. No, no, no. Well, you, I'll explain how I know, you do I know it. you do You get the webbing, the netting, yeah. and then you put the thing. No, I didn't even do that. I oh. had to go to, like, a construction right site and just salvage a, a slab of a, a, a drywall because dry, oh, it was such a large yeah, hole yeah, yeah. then i had to screw the drywall i had to chip it away to the two by fours then screw the new piece of drywall in then do that netting thing and stuff it with yeah, newspapers yeah, yeah. and uh-huh. shit because yeah, yeah. it was like thinner drywall <laughs> and then i have such a boner right now there's nothing hotter than a man who can like do shit <laughs> and then i fixed it and then i even told her i was like yo if you don't get your whole deposit back i'll fucking pay for it i did this shit and then thank God she never hit me up. I guess she got her money back. Yeah. yeah. Well, she might, she, she might still live there. You never know. No, because she, she moved. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Well, looks like that went, went well. Yeah, because I, I forgot. I am also a degenerate. So I went in and I did the initial like drywall one. Did you one. do this high? Were you doing this high? Of course. Of course. Okay. <laughs> of oh, cool. course. Just want to make so sure. So I did the initial fix with just the drywall. Mm-hmm. And then I said, I'll come back later and I'll, uh, I'll paint you know, it. I'll paint it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then I just never did. And then she called me. It was like, oh, I'm moving now. Can you Can finish it? Can you paint it? it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I then I painted the it. Room. And then that's when I said, yeah. damn, that I forgot about that one. Oh. That's a good one. Love that. Yeah, she need to share that story at a rehab. They love those war stories at rehab. <laughs> I don't have any of those because I'm not much of a drinker. I don't really do drugs either. So my story is I'm like, well, I guys, I'm just ruining my life all on my own. I didn't even need drugs to do <laughs> what it. What a loser. Huh? I was like, have you ever found a rock bottom totally sober? Because I did. Where are we at on time? Are we doing the poop About stuff? 40 minutes in. All right. Let's hear the. All right. It is fucking the poopy hour, baby. So Nicole in me has the best poop story. I started okay. to talk French. Um, yeah, you did. It was re- I was impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is, if I try to do it on purpose uh, again, it would be <laughs> it would, the wouldn't even worst. Work at all. I mean, it was very subtle and adorable the way you were doing it. <laughs> she uh, has the best poop story I've ever heard in my life. Uh, could you please tell yeah, us yeah, how yeah, you okay. ruined a family's home? Almost ruined. Almost <laughs> ruined. Very close. Very close to causing hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage to a person's I house. I thought you of my did. Poop. Damn it. Oh, I oh I did ruin it. Okay, but good. No permanent damage. It oh, was gnarly what happened. Okay. Um. So, uh, many years ago. I went on vacation um, to a friend's house in Houston um, because I don't know why I had time off from work. I don't even remember what the circumstances were, but for some reason I went to Houston with a friend of mine who was from there. We both lived here in LA. She was going back to visit her parents. Oh, I remember what it was. Her sister was a photographer and her sister was going to do free headshots for me. And I needed headshots at the time because I was, you know, I was acting and comedy and all of that. And um, I was a, I had time off because I was a fucking actor comedian and didn't have a consistent job. And what it happened, happened to have been uh, uh, Passover at the time, a Jewish holiday. And she was Jewish. And I was like, oh, cool. We'll go celebrate Passover uh, in Houston with your family. And her family's like known for like being great cooks. I, was, I l- fucking love eating. So uh, we get to Houston. Her sister takes pictures of me. And then we spend a wh- I spend a whole week there, you know, s- celebrate Passover with them. And um, Passover is a holiday that entails a lot of something called matzah. And if you don't know what matzah is, it's basically like quick dry cement for your colon. Like <laughs> it constipates you like nothing else could possibly constipate you. So it's like heroin. So I had been, I had been, <laughs> does heroin constipate you? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. It's like heroin, you but in a, a food form. Um, so I am just eating so much matzah in addition to eating just traditional like Texas Houston cuisine. If there's one thing Houston is known for, it's really good, like artery stopping cuisine. So I'm there for five days eating like a fucking pig, pounding matzah. I had, I didn't take a shit for five days and I was in fucking (laughs) agony. And on our last full day, our, was it our last full day? Yeah, it was our last full day there. We were going to be leaving the next night. Our last full day, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, Michelle, I'm so fucking constipated. I'm in so much pain. I think I'm impacted. Like I, I need to either go, um, to the to the pharmacy and get an enema or like i'm gonna have to go to a doctor like i feel like i'm impacted and she's like don't worry my mom makes the strongest coffee she has this coffee from like columbia or something and she's (laughs) like it's the strongest coffee you will ever have it's like fucking dynamite 
Oh my! She's God, like, just I drink a cup of this coffee. <laughs> it'll go right. It'll go right through you. Anyways, so I drink this cup of coffee. Fucking dynamite! I was like, oh my God, Michelle, game on. She's like, all right, go. I was staying in her sister's room, and her sister's room had its own little bathroom. She's like, go. She's like, shit, shower, shave, get ready, whatever. She's like, we have a ton of errands to run. It's my last day here, and we have Passover dinner tonight. We had, we're going to be having a Passover dinner at her house. So they had the whole like living room area, everything set up for like guests and whatever. And um, uh, so she was like, we got to run errands before dinner. Make it quick. I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to take a narnar dump, <laughs> take a quick shower, and get ready. I'm like, give me 30 minutes. She's like, perfect. Set the timer. Let's go. I go upstairs. I know that I'm going to be taking a shower after my dump. So I just turn the shower on real quick, get butt naked, um, and start That's a waste my, of water. I know. Well, it, it takes a while to heat up because it was an older house. All right. Anyway, so she's like, you know, <laughs> turn the water on, warm it up. I was like, this dump is going to take two seconds. Anyways, I sit down on the toilet, like just lay some pipe. Like, is, is laying pipe, is that poop? I'm pretty yeah. sure that's, that's sex. That's dick. Okay, cool. Just <laughs> laying a log. I don't know. Say. It was a big... Laying a log, that's it was better. A, it was, I was Lincoln logging. It was a big old fucking dump. <laughs> and it was, it was so big that I even said to myself, I should courtesy flush this and not even wipe. I think I might have wiped a little bit just because I was like, I should like get some of this off. What's with know? people not courtesy flushing? Anyways, Always courtesy So I flush. courtesy flush Always. that shit and it clogs. And I'm like, all right, no big deal. Um, and uh, there was no plunger in the bathroom. So I was like, Michelle, I clogged the toilet. Bring me a plunger. So she comes in with a plunger. By the way, still naked. My friend, All my friends have seen me naked. I have no problem being naked. And she's like, oh, Nicole, put some fucking clothes on kind of thing. I turn the shower <laughs> off, by the way. At this point, I turn the shower off. So it's all steamy in there, all right? So <laughs> oh, nice and steamy toasty. Steamy turds. Steamy. Oh, man. Uh, I, Michelle gives me the plunger. The plunger is up. like one of these like modern <laughs> plungers. Like I'm used to old school plungers. By the way, clogging toilets is like the name of my game. Like throughout the history of my life, I've clogged 5,000 toilets. Like when, my, when I come home to Michigan to visit my family, they move the plunger from a another bathroom into my bathroom at home so I can have it there because I will <laughs> clog a toilet and Michelle brings in this plunger. I'm used to like a cup and a stick and that's it for a plunger. But she had this like accordion, like it was like blue and plastic. It was like an accordion with a stick on it plunger. Cause I guess this like barrel is supposed to press more air through the, the, the oh, toilet man. line. Anyways, so I fucking do this plunging thing, and I'm fucking plunging, I'm plunging, I'm plunging. I probably plunged for, like, I don't know, 30 seconds. I got, like, a good amount of air, what I thought was in the line, to clear the line. I was like, all right, good. We're fucking good. This shit's going to go down. Flush the toilet. Water starts rising. Water starts rising. And I'm like, oh, God, it's fucking coming up. I throw the plunger in there, and I start, like, plunging furiously. And I was like, no, dude, no, no, no. And it starts coming up over the edge, and just shit water starts pouring out on the floor. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, Michelle! And I hear Michelle like coming running to me, and she's like, Nicole, turn the water off. And I was like, turn the water off? Like, how do you turn the water off on a it's fucking a toilet? Knob. I know, in my fucking years of <laughs> clogging toilets, I never knew that there was a water valve to turn the fucking water off. I turn the water off and the water's just like flowing on the floor. I'm fucking butt naked standing in my own shit. Michelle's standing in my shit at the other end of the bathroom. <laughs> and she's like... Throw some towels down. And I'm like, I see a little hand towel on the rail, uh. and I throw the hand towel down. She's like, no, the cabinet above the toilet. Throw all of them. And I open the cabinet, and there's a t uh, tower of, like, towels, and I start <laughs> taking them out one by one. And she's like, tip the whole tower. And I tip this whole tower of, like, literally eight fucking towels onto the floor and she's like spread them out and i'm like oh my god what is going on why is this such an emergency and then i hear michelle's mom downstairs and she's like michelle get the ladder and i was like get the ladder what is going on downstairs i had no idea what was going down on downstairs could possibly be related what was going on upstairs oh no and michelle's like oh my god just dry it up as quick as possible. And I'm like, all right, fucking cool. And then I hear Michelle's mom like freaking out downstairs and I'm like, Oh God, I have to go see what's going on. And so I, f I find like a big t-shirt to like put on and by the way, still bare ass at this point. So I put this big t-shirt on to like go downstairs to see what's going on. <laughs> and Michelle's mom has a ladder up in the living room, right below the bathroom. And she's got a screwdriver in her hand. And she starts unscrewing. There was like a speaker, um, a speaker system in the living room. And she's like unscrewing the speaker from the ceiling. And I was like, what is she doing? And I can see like, there's something it's like 
water or something like dripping from the oh, speaker no. and i was like what the fuck is happening oh god and i see her mom finally unscrew the speaker vent or whatever you want to fucking call it and the door of it swings down and a torrent of shit water <laughs> oh, pours fucking. out all over my friend's mom's head and i was like oh my god i just shit on my friend's mom's head like straight you up shit on your By friend's way, mom did the mom didn't miss a fucking beat she just gets in there with a towel and starts drying up the drywall on the ceiling because this has happened before not with shit water but i guess there had been a flood in the bathroom before and it had seeped through a crack in the floor in the bathroom and they didn't know about it and it destroyed the drywall on the ceiling yeah so she her instinct was oh by the way at this whole time their house is in escrow the, the house had been on the market for 40 months. They'd been trying to sell the house and it's finally an escrow and the escrow appraisal was happening the next day. <laughs> oh my God. So her mom is like, no fucking way is this happening. By the way, the fucking, the living room floor, it, the, the rug in the living room floor, by the way, a, t- a table had been set up right there for Rosh Hashanah. Oh God. Had fucking shrapnel on it. You're a terrible Living person. room floor, fucking rug covered in shit. This is worse than anything her I've mom, ever done her in Her mom my ends life. up, we end up rolling up the rug to take it out of there. By the way, her father has like heart issues and was like, can't find out about this because he'll have a fucking heart attack about the escrow. So he's like, he's he can't know. And they're like, and then some of the drywall fell out and Michelle's mom was like, oh, by the way, they send me back upstairs. They're like, go clean up the bathroom. And Michelle's housekeeper, they call her to come over and she doesn't speak a word of English. So I'm in the bathroom. They're like, go clean the bathroom with, I don't know what her fucking name was. The traditional fucking Spanish name. Anyway, so I'm upstairs in the in the bathroom with her. By the way, still in my t-shirt, no underwear. Have not wiped my butt properly. <laughs> um, I'm in the bathroom with this woman cleaning up my fucking fecal matter. Ugh. And I'm like, so where are you from? Oh. And she's like, Honduras. I was like, cool. <laughs> Just the, the craziest thing. And then Michelle's mom had to call a contractor to come and fix the drywall. She like happened to know a handyman who happened to be available at the time who could fix the drywall around the speaker. Yeah. So she's like the plaster or whatever. So she's like, <laughs> Michelle's like, we have to go get these errands done before Passover dinner tonight. They made me stay there. They're like, the contractor's going to come here, explain to him what happened so he can fix it. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, okay, how many details do I need to include? <laughs> Leave out the doo doo. Anyway, so I was like, the guy comes. I like, you know, explain to him. I'm like, there was a little bit of a flood in the bathroom upstairs. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's right. Oh, and she had me blow dry the, the, the <laughs> plaster. To dry it up so no more would like chisel because like when it gets wet it crumbles, oh man! But I remember after it happened, while the contractor was there fixing the the ceiling, I left the house to go for a walk to call my mom, and I told my mom what happened. I was like, "Mom, I was like, I like I don't know how much it's gonna cost. There's a lot of damage. I don't know. Supposedly the last time it happened, it was like two hundred thousand dollars in damage. So like I don't I don't know. My mom is like, first of all, why didn't you courtesy flush? I'm like, I did. It was just a really big piece of poop. Anyways, that's my story. You ruined a home. Almost ruined a home. You it ruined did cost a it did cost something for them to fix it, and they threw away all the towels <laughs> and they had to yeah. dry clean a rug, which I guess is extremely expensive. Those um, were the Martha once I'm Stewart super rich, once I'm now. super rich, I'm just going to send them a check for like $50,000 and be like, hey, let's call it a day, you know? I uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I should tell a poop story. That was an epic poop story. I mean, that was pretty crazy. I mean, I have so many poop stories, it's insane. You made me uh, remember something that is not similar, but similar. So I booked a commercial with actually Grace Lusk. You know Grace Lusk? I love Grace. She's awesome. Oh, fabulous. So she was my commercial girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And we were in an Alzheimer's commercial. And by oh, the way, the, the way I booked it, I was the grand uh, daughter's boyfriend. And in the breakdown, there's no lines. I say nothing. It's all pantomiming. Mm-hmm. And I'm at the audition, and I'm pantomiming. Just, we're supposed to look concerned mm-hmm. about grandma. She loses her, mm-hmm. her purse, and yeah, her, yeah, uh-huh. her purse is in her lap. You know, she, it's, an Alzheimer's, it's an Alzheimer's situation. commercial. And then uh, I said commercial funny. And then so in the audition, I... I say, keep in mind, I have no line. So after it's done, I, I'm a comedian. I was like, I got to be funny. And I, and I say, well, grandmother's really losing it, huh? <laughs> and then everybody laughs. And I was like, oh, why did I do that? And I regretted it immediately afterwards. And then I fucking booked it. <laughs> Amazing. So then I go to the shoot. And uh, they're doing a like a time uh, capsule filming, time lapse. Time lapse, uh-huh. Yeah, I said the wrong thing. And then so they're filming like 
uh, three days worth in fast motion that's played in 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So everything has to stay the same. The outfits has to stay the same. Mm -hmm. The set has to stay the same. <laughs> and I'm a, I fucking I'm only in like two or three scenes, and uh, I'm sitting at the table, of the dinner where the set where you can't mm -hmm. fuck up, mm -hmm. and they have a dinner set and they have wine glasses, and we're getting ready. They're setting us up. They're doing makeup. They're all ready, rolling, rolling. You know they say those fucking actor words, and then I just fucking go like this. I swear I was like a twitch. I get excited. And knocked I knocked over a glass of wine. <laughs> I knocked over a glass of wine. <laughs> I not they the look of their faces. Oh no, they hated they you more than anything. They hated the me world, more ever, than ever. You, you pooping everything. on a home and killing a family. They hated me <laughs> so much. They put their heads down, and you know when like like a dad like wants to beat his kid but he can't because there's like cops around or something. You know they're yeah, just like this. Very familiar scenario. They're, yes, they're just like this. They're just like oh god, this kid just this fucking kid. This kid just what fucking. is he on drugs? <laughs> I was sober. I was even, sober. So, even sober, you're ruining I people's had, fake houses. I had too many oranges that day. They had a lot of free food. I don't know what happened. A lot of coffee, a lot of Red Bulls. Wait, Bowls. how does this have to do with poop, by the way? It doesn't. Oh, God, I thought this was a poop story. No, I was just saying, your poop story is so long, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to X my poop. I got a lot of poop stories, but this is still oh, a good okay. story. Yeah, it's a great story. Great and story. then they, they fucking have to like take the tablecloth everything. out. Everything, redo everything. They redo yeah, everything, uh -huh. the check white the floor, camera, check the white floor. Yeah, yeah, put yeah. the fucking shit, and mm -hmm. I just have my head down, and Grace is so sweet. She's just like rubbing my back like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, like, oh, man, they're never going to book me again have you booked anything since then no uh, well maybe maybe <laughs> that was that. what did it there was like a rumor out in the commercial world they're like this guy craig <laughs> ruin set what a dumb dumb <laughs> did i talk about mosh pit guy yeah. where i broke the table yeah yep. that was that that was another story my first commercial i ever booked i fucking broke the table and the director thought i broke my arm and i was just like oh, oh. i was a mosh pit guy uh, anyways uh <laughs> if you're uh booking commercials i'm your guy yeah 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 yeah, and uh, it just it just fucked up the whole, the whole commercial, and I felt real rotten about it. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Well, don't fuck up next time. Yeah. Moral of the story is uh, be I conscious of your limbs. I guess I will do a poop <laughs> one. So this was my sister's birthday, and we went to this place, Baba Ganoush in San Pedro. It's a Moroccan restaurant. It's real cool, and they got belly dancers, and they give you a little bread to eat the little stuff. Pita, little pita. pita yeah, and and then. We eat there, and I'm walking in my car. I drove separately, and I got shit real bad, like a dumb and dumber, like, mm. like oh, no, oh like, no, this like is bad. Where do I go? Yeah. So I run into this bar. It's called Crimson. And I just go beeline straight to the bathroom. Don't want to talk to anybody. Don't want to ask permission. Don't want to no, get no, denied. No, this gone. shit You're is coming right. out. Uh -huh. Let me in. I go straight to the bathroom, go to the men's restroom. Light won't turn on. Oh, that's, oh, no. that's funny. I'm like, why won't the light turn on? I don't got time for that shit. I'm going to shit my pants. Diarrhea City. Here we come. Sit on the toilet. Fucking blow it up. <laughs> blow up the toilet. Oh, God. I don't even know where this is going. No, it's not, it's not that bad, but it's bad. <laughs> and then uh, do my business. I make it. I do not shit my pants, but I destroy this toilet. And then I go flush. No. And it's black. It's dark. I can't tell. And nothing's happening. And I go, oh, that probably wasn't good enough. And I'm done. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm wiped. I'm white, pants buckled, everything. I go flush again, thinking I'm doing the good thing, clearing the turd. Oh, no, no. All of no. a sudden, I just, I'm in darkness. <laughs> I'm in, keep oh, in mind. Didn't, I'm you, black. didn't you have a f smartphone? At this time, probably not, no. Oh, I was very God. late in the smartphone oh, game. Oh, God. And I just hear this <laughs> oh, water Just water fall. torrent. Just oh, water. It's a, a doo-doo torrent. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. I was like, that's why. There was the light was off and there was like a fucking do not enter <laughs> sign or whatever. You know? I was like, <laughs> and then I just fucking beeline and run out. There's so just I like water. You're like literally. trickling water to the door. <laughs> just shit storm this bar uh. and just ran in, ran out. Uh. Didn't give them time to fucking find out who did that. And I was wondering, you know, like where all the red flags and the signs are there? Like, oh, that's why, like, the door was that way. That's yeah. why the do yeah. not enter tape yeah, was yeah. there. That's why the light was off. You missed off. all the red flags. You saw them and you were like, is this capture the red flag? I'm just going to gather them. I just had take to all poop, of them and right? then just do something fun later. I had to fucking shit, man. And then I, I in hindsight, I should have used the ladies' room, but what yeah, are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck, that's a great story. Yeah. 
Crimson. You... So Crimson, if you're looking to sponsor a podcast. <laughs> or a poop cast. Or a yeah. poop cast. <laughs> Should we just I, start uh, a podcast where we only sell, tell poop stories? No, because it's too much. Me and him did one, and we talked about poop for 30 minutes. I listened to it. I was like, that was too much. Uh, that was uh, too much. It's never too much. <laughs> no, it's good to have. Well, by the way, I was in, I was in. in a documentary about poop called Poop Talk. Yeah. Um, a bunch of comedians are in it. So if you guys are really into poop and you want to watch a really funny documentary on Poop Talk, um, Kumail Nanjiani is in it, uh, Pete Holmes, Nicole Byer, uh, Jamie Lee. Um, uh, How come I didn't get the poop call? Yo, I don't know. That's I right up my alley. alley. It's really right <laughs> up your fucking If there's any poop comic, alley. there's yeah, like yeah. Nick Swartzen and me. And me. You're a poop comic too. I don't really. You're I not mean, a poop I got, comic. But I got some stories. I mean, I've IBS. My whole life is a shit story. I know your whole life is a shit story, but I'm saying, I mean, my but, whole life is a shit story, and your whole life has been a shit storm. I like that. Yeah, look at us. Thanks. We're, those are our brands, by the way. Yeah, I'm a fart knocker. What do you want from me? I grew up on Beavis and Butthead. Fart, <laughs> fart, fart, <laughs> fart. Farts I fucking... are always funny. I'm sorry. There's there. I will never write a joke that's funnier than just a well timed fart. <laughs> it's true. Nothing. I nothing. love them. There's absolutely nothing funnier than just a fart in a fucking a octopus. fart that wakes you up. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, I remember one time my grandma was sleeping on. I had this like little like <laughs> kind of like couch, I guess you could say, in my bedroom. Um, and my grandma was sleeping on it once and she's, you know, snoring, just old lady snoring. And all of a sudden she farted and she woke herself up and she was like, Oh, Nikki, did you fart? <laughs> I was like, bitch, that was you. <laughs> my Nana had the most rotten farts oh, my in all the <laughs> land. Just a nar nar You're fart. like, what, what? How is it like stale but fresh? Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you do that? <laughs> what is going on? It's a lot of age stale in there. Stale but fresh. Like, why? I don't understand it. Hilarious. I think we touched, touched, we did a good one. Where are we, we at? Good. I feel like it's a good podcast. Just a little, uh, about an hour. About an hour? Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? No, I mean, how long do you like your pods to be? An hour. All right, so we did it. All right, so this is Nicole Shitstorm Podcast. I mean, uh, damn it, Nicole, I ruined Amy everything. Schreiber. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to call you Nicole Shitstorm Sh- Schreiber. I love you. But I, I fucking love podcast. you. I love you. You're one of my favorites. Thank you. Um, I've always enjoyed you and your comedy, and congrats on being a past paid regular. Thank you. Thank you. At the Comedy Store, check her out at the World Famous Comedy Store. I have Store. a podcast, too. Um, yeah, check it's, her podcast It's a social out. experiment podcast. It's called Getting to Know You Podcast. It's me and this other girl, Nikki Bond. We just talk to each other and get to know each other in real time. We actually don't talk outside of the podcast. We met, and then 15 <laughs> minutes later decided we were going to start this podcast where we only get to know each other on the podcast. That's interesting. That's yeah. great. We've never had a conversation outside of it. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> so if you well, want to hear, if you hear two, if, if you're the kind of person who likes to be a bug on the wall and like hear people like getting to know each other, it's like we're on a first date all the time. Mm, that's cool. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm more of a poop. Uh, yeah, I know. Poop I know. I know. Your, I know your vibe. <laughs> I know your vibe. <laughs> Anyways, Nicole Amy Schreiber, check her out. Thank you for listening, liking, and subscribing. Oh, let me give a shout out to my music man. Greg Samanamarado, I don't know how to say your last name, dude, but this dude just made me music for my podcast, and it's fucking dope. It's hip-hop and then Spanish, and I love both those things. Dude, can he make some music for my podcast? I mean, hit him up. He might hey, charge bro, you. I don't listening, know. you're listening, help me. But yeah, anyways, the intro is that full. I'll tag him. I already did today. Check him out. So thank you for the music. That shit's dope as fuck. You, you, he got fireworks, shit. In there, my oh, voice. Amazing. Wow. Uh, Hermosa Beach PD chasing me because of my firework. Yeah, horse I love that with the horses. Uh, it's in the music. One of my favorite stories that you have, for sure. He made a 20, 30 second music clip that sums up my life story. How did you do that, <laughs> sir? Thank you, Greg Zamanamanado. Anyways, thank you for listening. I love you all. Have a good evening. <laughs>